Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today we're continuing on with our Electronics 201 lectures. Um, remember that Electronics 201 is digital, while Electronics 101 is analog. So if you're not interested in digital, or uh, you should move back to 101, and if you are interested in digital, well then, you found the right series. Um, today we're going to be talking about the helpful aid that is the pull-up and pull down resistor. Now, I'd like to introduce first this topic of a three state gate or a three state buffer. If you've done anything with logic, you'll probably be saying, hey, there's only two states there's on and there's off. Well, while that is true, you are missing one, as this is a three-state gate, as most gates are. The third state is disconnect. So if you think about this like a uh, home outlet, on is you flip the switch on, off is you've turned the switch off, and disconnected is you've pulled the plug out altogether. So your on state is some sort of voltage plus, your off state is some is your ground, and your disconnect is floating. Now, it's that third state that provides some sort of issue, as I will now illustrate. So let's say you've got your 5 volts plus and you've connected that to a switch, which is going to a microcontroller. See, that's the uh, abbreviation for microcontroller, uh, the mu meaning micro and C controller. Yeah, it's creative. So, you've got your five volts, you've got your switch, and you've got your microcontroller, and this is set up to read that input. So if you close the switch, the five volts flows in and the microcontroller reads on. But what happens if you leave the switch open? Well, as I described earlier, there's on, there's off, and there's disconnected. It's not on because it's no longer connected to the high voltage. It's not low because well, there's no path to ground. So by process of elimination, when it's open, that must mean it's floating. Now, floating is bad because if there's any stray voltage or stray current in this at this point or in the microcontroller itself, it will leach in to this pin and could cause it to oscillate. So it could turn on, it could turn off, it could turn on, it, or it could cycle completely, which is a problem if you're trying to run a timer or you need a very specific interrupt for a specific whatever. So, the concept of pulling up and pulling down is to remove that issue. Now before we get, before I go into that, I want to talk about one thing because it's going to relate later, and that's called impedance. Now, in this circuit, if I were just, just to just redraw this, 5 volts plus, you've got your switch, you've got your microcontroller, but inside the microcontroller, there's, all, there's another s resistor before it goes to the gate, before it goes to that gate. And this resistor is what's called the pin's impedance. It has a certain resistance. And the goal of, and the point of that is to make it so that it doesn't pull very much current from the circuit. If this were to have a very low impedance, it would just start sucking current away from your power supply. And it would be very power inefficient. So if you were to have something that couldn't source a lot of current, it wouldn't work very well because it's just going to drain it all away. And it's going to turn on instantly and then turn right back off. That's a problem. The good thing about having high impedance is that it doesn't take um, it's not going to draw that much current. So you can have a very weak signal and you won't have to worry about it being drawn out completely because it's just going to suck the current away. Impedance is your friend. So, I brought that up, store it away for a second because I'm going to get into the circuits now. So you've got your pull up. Now, a pull up and pull down resistor is no separate than is no different than an ordinary resistor. It's just how you use it in the circuit. So here's 5 volts. 
and you've got a resistor and then that's connected to the microcontroller and then you've got a switch which flows to ground okay and that's a pull up resistor it's pulling the pin up to 5 volts when you've left the switch open so rather than leave it floating it's being pulled up so when you open the switch you've got 5 volts it's on when you close the switch this flows to ground and it pulls any remaining voltage and current in here also to ground so it goes to ground so it gets turned off now this is something I like to call the curmudgeon voltage. The reason it decides to flow to ground as rather into the controller is because of this concept of impedance. As I've mentioned in other lectures, current is lazy. It's going to take the path of least resistance. It's going to want to flow straight to ground as opposed to straight to the microcontroller. So that impedance is helping push the current out and away and to ground. Now this resistor here serves uh, another point. If this resistor weren't here it would have the same effect except that when you close the switch it would you'd be connecting your 5 volt supply directly to ground and that is called a short circuit. So that resistor also serves to limit the drain on this when it gets pulled to ground. Okay, so that's pull up, and then there's pull down. So you've got your 5 volts connected to your switch. You know, I'm going to orient this in a different way. 5 volts connected to a switch which connects to your microcontroller and then this gets connected through a resistor to ground so that when you leave the switch open it's no longer floating and any current gets pulled straight to ground so it gets turned off and then when you close the switch you get your 5 volts and it's on. Now this is sort of the reverse of the pull up. 5 volts will flow across and into this and be pulled and not be pulled down as opposed to this where the reverse is true and it's that resistor that's helping to direct where things flow. Now, this, when it comes to choosing, uh, oh, before I go into that, I should point out one thing. This one is conceptually inverting. And what I mean by that is when you leave it open, it's on, and when you close it, it's ground which is the opposite of you thinking closed, on, open, off, which is what you see here. Open, open, off, closed, on. So this is sort of, in, this is inverting the logic, so you want to take that into consideration if you use one of these. So um, what I wanted to talk about now, last thing, is choosing this resistance generally when it comes to choosing R you want something about 10 times the impedance of the pin uh, let me just 10 times the impedance of input pin so that as it flows across here, this has a lower resistance than this. So it'll accept, it'll go through here, it'll go into the microcontroller instead of flowing straight to ground. And even here, 
Well, here it doesn't matter as much because it's just flowing. Even when it's open, it doesn't have anywhere else to go, so it'll flow straight to the microcontroller. Um, okay. One quick last thing. Choosing which one of these you're going to use. Um, a lot of times you won't have a choice. Like for this one, a pull up resistor is actually built into a lot of microcontrollers. So you won't have to put it into the circuit. This one, on the other hand, isn't built into a lot of circuits, or isn't built into a lot of microcontrollers. So you'll have to build it outside the circuit. But again, this one is non-inverting. This one is. So take your pick. It's a uh, half dozen. What is it? What is that phrase? Six of one, half dozen the other. It doesn't matter. So um, that's it. Today we covered the pull up and pull down resistors. Um, very useful if you want to avoid that floating state because floating is bad. I'm gonna write that. In. Ooh. I'm gonna write that in here. Whoa. Floating is bad. I remember that. Floating bad. All right. So uh, that's been. This has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.